Hi Girl Scouts! Betsy Nichols here, Program Specialist for the Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines, returning to you from Duluth, Minnesota. This video is part two of four for the Ambassador Think Like an Engineer journey. But first, let's get started with the Girl Scout Promise and the Girl Scout Law. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout Law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Great. So, like I said, this video is the second one of the journey, um, and so we are going through the second design challenge, and that is called Zipline Course. The premise of the challenge is you have been contacted by the director of a local summer camp. The camp has a big wooded area with tall trees, perfect for the campers to have an outdoor um, adventure. So you have been hired as an engineer to design and build a prototype of a zipline course that would be fun for the campers and make use of the camp's natural environment. Okay. So there's our premise and here is the criteria that our zipline prototypes need to meet. The zipline course must be at least five feet tall, needs to have at least four platforms, and so that would be three ziplines connecting the four platforms, and it needs to be able to carry a ping pong ball from the top string to the bottom platform in 15 seconds or less. And then here are the constraints that we are working with. You may only use chipboard from like a cereal box or the back of a notepad, six to eight small paper or plastic cups, nine plastic straws, 10 feet of smooth line. So we're looking at fishing line or unwaxed dental floss, eight standard flat steel washers, one inch in diameter or larger, heavy books for, um, or any other material to stack, and tape, duct tape or masking tape. Um, you can also use scissors and a hole puncher, uh, but those cannot be part of the final course. And you are allowed to move the ping pong from one line to the other with your hands. So it doesn't have to be one continuous thing you can move the ping pong ball from the first zip line to the second zip line. All right, so that is our, um, those are our rules that we're working with. So I am going to take a closer look at that list of supplies that I just read out, and I'm going to see how close I can get to this list with what I have at home. Why don't you take a second to do the same, and I will be right back with what I find. I am back with my supplies. This is what I was able to round up. So I have two empty Girl Scout cookie boxes. I have some cardboard, pieces of cardboard. I have my scissors. I have, um, I found a couple binder clips and some um, paper clips uh, that I'd like to use. I um, am conducting my own little experiment because I do not have fishing line, and I know that that was kind of the preferred um, material for zip lines. So I have dental floss. Um, it is waxed. I know that they said unwaxed would be better, um, but this is what I have. And then I also have embroidery floss and um, some sewing thread. So I'm going to do my own little experiment and have each segment um, made. Uh, of my zip line made out of a different type of string just to see which one um, I prefer and which one works better and then maybe uh, that can be helpful to you. Um, I don't have any paper cups or plastic cups and I think those are maybe intended to be what carries your ping pong ball down uh, the zip line so I came up with a couple different options. Um, I took one example is I made my own paper cup and I took a toilet paper roll, cut it in half so it was shorter, and then I glued um, a piece of paper around the bottom of it so it's a little cup. 
And then I also made, um, if you don't have any um, spare paper, uh, paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls, I also made a little um, paper cone. So that could be something else to carry your model down the zip line. Um, and then I also don't have ping pong balls. So my stand-in is um, I have this little bottle of hand lotion. So it's gonna sit in the little uh, toilet paper tube and um, be my test subject. So that's what I came up with. I also have a couple different types of tape. I have washi tape and electrical tape. I have a ruler and um, so here's, here's my game plan. Um, I need to figure out where I'm going to build my zip line. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it here in my home or maybe I'll do it in the hallway. Um, if you have access to the outdoors and you wanna do it from a couple different trees, um, that's an option. Um, I'm not worried about figuring out how uh, to measure out five feet to get it five feet high uh, because I'm five feet tall. So if it's, if it's above my head, then I know I'm in good shape. Uh, so that's going to be my method. Um, so I'm going to get to designing and building. Why don't you do the same? And I wish you the best of luck and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so you might have seen from the initial tests that I inserted that the dental floss did not work so I proceeded with just the embroidery floss and the thread so I have four different platforms each of them have a semicircle on top and then I made a right triangle support system to hold it upright so that my little cups can hop from platform to platform and then each cup has a roll of tape inside. So you can see that one. Um, I, for, I decided to swap out the hand lotion just because I wanted to have three different pods to go through the zip line course um, instead of one that I would swap out. So let's give it a test. So there you have it. It took me a couple tries to make my zipline successful. So what I was looking for was a connection between the platform and the paper cup as it was coming in. And there were two tries where the paper cup got stuck halfway or got stuck right before it met the platform. And um, upon inspection, I noticed that my zip lines were um, getting a little loose, drooping down a little bit. And so I had to come up with ways to keep my zip lines completely tight so that there could be a nice easy glide from the cup uh, from platform to platform. So um, I would be very interested to hear about the experience that you had, any problems that you ran into and how you solved them. And I would absolutely love to see any of the zip lines that you made uh, yourselves. So that concludes this second design challenge. I want to thank you so much for joining me and I really hope that you tune in next week for our des uh, third design challenge. But for now, I just hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.